Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's one o'clock, um, so we can get started. Thank you for being with me uh, this afternoon. My name is Alex McDonald, and I'm the Director of Customer Experience with Travel Pledge. Um, I want to thank the Community Foundation for Northeast Georgia for inviting me to speak today on this important topic. Um, so we'll be covering the key steps uh, to throwing your virtual event and uh, raising a lot of money. A little bit about Travel Pledge. Um, we're your connection to donated experiences from generous businesses. So if you run an annual auction and procurement is a struggle, um, we're help, here to help. So please feel free to contact me after the webinar uh, to learn more. About me, um, I handle our customer onboarding and support, as well as many of our marketing functions, as well as um, preparing educational content for our blog. Um, blog.travelpledge.com. If you go there, you'll see an article that out outlines a lot of what you'll learn here today about throwing a virtual gala. Um, I did interviews with several auctioneers, um, as well as online auction companies, as well as watch a lot of videos on the YouTube um, to put together the recommendations um, here today. If you have a question, feel free to ask anytime using the Q&A feature. Uh, you can see the icon on this slide. Uh, there's no comments uh, allowed on this uh, webinar. Everything will come through the Q&A. Um, so I can uh, decipher what's, what's a question versus a comment. Everything will just be a question through uh, the Q&A. I'll answer questions per periodically throughout the presentation as well as at the end. Okay, we're gonna start off with a poll question. Why are you here? Now, I know it's a very existential question, um, but I'm trying to get a feel for um, what brought you to, to sign up for this webinar uh, today. Okay, get your uh, last votes in. And yeah, okay, so looks like most people here are just curious about virtual events um, and they may be the way of the future. I'm hearing that a lot. That's a very good reason to be here. Uh, the Tiger King webinar um, is next week, so um, sorry. Okay, let me move on. All right, so what is a virtual gala? A virtual gala is a fundraising celebration where donors participate through the internet instead of in person. Uh, the benefits are that you can participate from anywhere. Uh, you'll save money on staff, food, and venue. Uh, you can enhance your social media cha channels. So let's say you put your virtual gala to um, Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Well, now you're exposing your audience to those channels and you can communicate uh, with them uh, through those channels for the rest of the year. And you can reach a new audience. You might just find that you have uh, a segment of your donor base who appreciate virtual events uh, as opposed to in-person events. Um, and so now you can segment your audience and have an event for each of them, um, which is really good for retention. Now you may be wondering, okay, that's great, but should I be throwing a virtual gala now during the coronavirus pandemic uh, the best argument for it would be that right now a lot of people are rescheduling, a lot of nonprofits are rescheduling uh, their event for the fall. So if you were to do that, well, now you're competing with other nonprofits as well as other programming that you might have scheduled for the fall. Uh, there's kind of a void in messaging uh, right now. So you can fill the void and be one of the few nonprofits with uh, events uh, for their donor base. Um, if you were to look at the for-profit uh, marketplace uh, as in terms of what businesses do the best during a recession, it's the ones who continue marketing uh, even um, when the stock market is going down and, and things are going haywire because after the recession, uh, they've built up that brand equity um, by, by filling the void when everybody else left. Uh, we'll first talk about some myths regarding virtual galas. Uh, myth number one is that virtual galas must be live. Uh, you can pre-record your virtual gala or you can present it live. 
Um, I know that live presentations make a lot of people very nervous, and I know there are a lot of uh, virtual galas that are just being pre-recorded and premiered at a particular time. Myth number two is that virtual galas must be a big production. Uh, the most important things about your virtual gala are one, that you communicate your, your message authentically, and two, that you make it very easy for people to give you money. Um, but you don't need to have a big production. It's a nice to have. If it turns out great, uh, then you'll have a great marketing piece. But authenticity and making it easy to give you money are the two most important things. And myth number three is there is a right way to throw a virtual gala. I'm going to give you a lot of options here today. I know it can seem very overwhelming. I encourage you not to get uh, paralysis by analysis. Just make a decision and and move on. There are many paths for you to raise a lot of money. Um, so pick something that you're confident that you can execute well. Okay, I'm gonna pause and check. I have a question. Um, okay, just a comment. All right, um, step one to uh, throwing your virtual gala is to plan your programming. So start here before worrying about all the tools you're going to use. Your message should dictate the technology you use, not the other way around. Uh, the three main aspects to a virtual gala would be a streamed video, again, that can be live or pre-recorded, an online auction, and a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign uh, that's associated with your event. And I'm going to go into more details into each of these um, later on. Obviously, the intersection of the circles is going to be the most work. It also gives you the most potential uh, to raise, raise uh, more money. As far as your video presentation goes, uh, it's the usual suspects, a monologue, speeches, interviews, uh, pre-recorded video, contests and polls, a live auction, and fund a need. Um, I'm put a box around fund a need because this is where virtual galas are getting their most return. So everything else that goes into your programming should be optimized around the fund a need. That's all to say, don't throw a two hour virtual gala and then hide the fund a need at the very end. You wanna have the fund a need when you think the most people are logged on and engaged. While virtual galas are great because people can join with a click, uh, this serves to remind you that people can also leave with a click. So you need to keep your audience engaged. Uh, your presentation really shouldn't be more than an hour. Uh, you'd rather have a concise, very engaging presentation instead of a very long one. Uh, your host should have a uh, good passion to connect to your audience and ability, uh, nice improv ability, and also be appropriate, someone you want to represent your brand well. But remember, the internet lives forever, um, so you want the right people in front of the camera. And the last way is through the comment uh, section, which I... Uh, which deserves its own slide. So the chat window um, is going to be very important to keeping your attendees around. If they ask a question or submit something via chat, uh, they're going to stick around to see whether the hosts acknowledge it. Uh, the way that to engage people via the chat window, one is to salt the chat window. So if you've ever been to a coffee shop, even if you're the first customer there, you notice there's always a $5 bill in the tip jar. That's called salting the tip jar, and it communicates that it is okay to leave them money. Well, similarly, you want some of your friendly, uh, your friendlies in the audience to leave comments, get things stirred up there, um, so everyone else feels uh, like they should do the same. Uh, you should dedicate a chat person uh, to responding to chats in real time, um, engaging people, calling people out by name if necessary uh, to build the activity. The host should provide shout outs to people um, who are commenting. And lastly, you can play games uh, to encourage comments. Some examples would be asking a trivia question and rewarding the first correct answer uh, submitted via the comments. Another fun one would be people can comment a funny phrase uh, and the hosts have to work that into their monologue. Um, so there's no shortage of opportunity to encourage comments. Uh, just trust that that's going to be key to maintaining engagement throughout your event. 
All right, uh, the next part of the programming is your online auction. If you've never done an online auction, let's say you've only ever done a paper-based silent auction or a raise the paddle um, live auction, the online auction is exactly what it sounds like. Items uh, show up on people's phones um, and they can place bids and they get notified if they get outbid. Um, as to what can you auction in this uh, day and age, Cause-related experiences are great. So if you're a school, you can do a um, principal for a day, or I saw a nonprofit auction off the right to uh, name the theme for next year's uh, gala. Um, so those are inexpensive, um, fun, uh, good, good options um, for now. Those are some other things, local gift cards, online lessons, subscriptions, uh, cameo videos. You might think that travel is surprising. Anecdotally, we've heard that travel sold pretty well because people are cooped up in their apartment and they're just dreaming about um, going on that beach vacation or just getting away um, from, from their homes that they've been cooped up in. Um, so don't shy away uh, from travel. And toilet paper, of course, that would be um, a, a record setter. All right, we're going to open up our second poll before we get into um, the tools to use. Um, and that is how technically savvy are you? Uh, someone asked, can you give some concrete examples about salting the chat? Uh, it can be as simple as I'm so excited to be here. Um, it, it, it's great that you're throwing a virtual gala. Um, if something comes up that someone tells a joke, you can chat. Ha ha ha. I really like that joke. Um, anything basic just to make sure that you're not the, um, not the, the first one to chat. Uh, will the PowerPoint be available to download afterwards? Um, the recording of this uh, webinar will be available. And if you uh, contact me directly, I'll, I'd be happy to send you the slide deck. Okay, let's end the polling. Okay, so we have one uh, very savvy person uh, most people are know enough to be dangerous. Um, okay, and a few uh, few luddites, but that's okay. We will um, we'll make this a, a very approachable um, approachable presentation. All right. So step two, uh, you planned your programming. It's to get the right tools. Uh, we'll start with video production. If you have an AV team, you're going to want to engage them and they'll be able to handle all of this. If you are doing it yourself, uh, then these are the basic things that you're going to need. Obviously, you'll need a webcam, uh, a microphone and lighting. Um, if you have a better webcam, you can have worse lighting because the webcam can compensate for that. A backdrop or event space uh, to reinforce your branding. I know a lot of schools have been having their virtual galas uh, on their theater stage. That happened in early March. That may or may not be an option for you uh, today as the situation worsens. A soundtrack, inspirational music, uh, so there's no awkward pauses. Also have seen virtual galas where uh, there's a laugh track and applause uh, track. There's a reason that the sitcoms have laugh tracks. Um, it's social proof that something was funny. Um, so don't be afraid to throw in some, some funny soundtracks there. Uh, your wardrobe, dress up like uh, your theme would dictate. And lastly, an encoder. So this would be an advanced thing in case you wanted to stream to Facebook Live or YouTube Live and you wanted to have multiple camera angles. Um, so if you get to the point where you think you need an encoder, you probably should have an AV professional uh, helping you out. Microphone is the most important thing. Uh, people will tolerate some level of grainy video, but they will not tolerate if they can't understand you. Um, so make sure, double, triple check that your sound um, is, is working well and, and invest in a good microphone. The next uh, tool you'll need is a streaming service. Uh, there's 
two main paths you can take with this. One is go through a social media streaming service. That would be a Facebook Live or YouTube Live. And the other would be to go with a webinar software uh, like Zoom, but there's no shortage of, of competitors out there that you can choose from. Uh, there have been successful events that have used either. Uh, so it's really gonna come down to what you need, uh, what tools you need um, for your presentation. Generally, social media is going to be better if you want an embedded donate button within the, uh, the video window. Uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live both allow this so long as you verify your 501c3 status with them. Uh, they're better, uh, social media is better for building up your social channel. You're exposing a new uh, audience uh, to your Facebook page and you can get followers so that in, for the rest of the year, uh, you can communicate to them through that channel. Uh, it's better for pre-recorded uh, presentations. Uh, both Facebook and YouTube have what are called premiere uh, functionality. That means that you can upload a video and just say, this should be made, this should premiere, uh, this should go live at a, at a certain time. And uh, there's no download required uh, for, uh, for viewers. A webinar software is better if you wanna collect registrations, especially if you're gonna have a ticketed event. Um, if you need to switch between presenters, uh, switching between Zoom uh, presenters is, is pretty easy, as well as with other webinar softwares, uh, as well as uh, doing a screen share. So generally, webinar software has more embedded features for you, uh, but that's not to say that you can't achieve the same results with a third-party software uh, like an encoder um, with your, your streaming to social media. Lastly, uh, webinar software such as Zoom, for instance, can stream to Facebook Live and YouTube Live. So if you like the uh, presentation abilities, the screen sharing abilities, but you want the ultimate viewer to watch your presentation from Facebook Live and YouTube Live, um, then, then you can do that um, through, your, through most webinar softwares. Mobile bidding. Um, there's no shortage of options to choose from again. Uh, the ones with the suitcase next to them, those are travel pledge partners. That means that if you were to, to uh, select an experience within travel pledge, uh, we make it easy to sync uh, the, all the photos, all the descriptions, all the restrictions uh, into the mobile bidding event with the click of a button. So it saves some time and reduces error. Recently, event.gives announced the ability that they are incorporating live video into their online auction platform. So uh, an auctioneer can be presenting uh, live to the audience and there will be a button that pops up that says bid or give, let's say if you're doing a, a fund to need. Um, I got a sneak peek of that a couple weeks ago. It was very impressive. I know a lot of auctioneers are very excited about it. Um, so that would be something uh, to consider. And that should be released later this month. Mobile bidding, uh, if you've never done it before, it is relatively affordable. Uh, it, it increases in cost based off of the size of your event. So you are probably pay a base license fee between $600 and $3,000, um, as well as purchase various add-ons such as live video functionality or if, you, if your event is ticketed. Um, as well as when a donor checks out, uh, they'll be charged a credit card processing fee. Uh, contrast that with bidding through the chat window. If you have a small event, this could be an option for you. I talked to an auctioneer who did this and he said it was just a hoot. Um, so that won't cost you anything. It's probably not scalable if you're having a really big event, um, but it is something uh, for you to consider. And the last tool uh, that you'll need, if you're not using mobile bidding, uh, you'll need another way for people to give you money. So we talked about the donate buttons within Facebook and YouTube Live. Uh, the donate portal on your website is an option to direct people to PayPal, as well as peer-to-peer -peer, uh, fundraising solutions like GiveButter and Classy. And I'll talk about the applications uh, for a peer-to-peer -peer campaign um, in the next section. But for now, I will pause and look at the questions that have come in. Okay, um, done. All right, done. We are currently having an online auction besides our uh, nonprofit Facebook, Instagram page. What other ways can we engage new 
donors. Okay, the next session is about promoting your event. So we'll cover that um, there. Okay, um, where can we get music for soundtrack? Uh, there's plenty of um, music providers. If you've ever produced a video, just search for uplifting music soundtrack and there's a whole genre of music where you can pay to have the license for it. You'll pay under 20 bucks um, for it. Uh, and there's lots of good options for, for you to, to choose from. Um, okay, and then there's a question about um, pricing um, with uh, ClickBid, um, and I can follow up with you, Sandy, after the event. Okay. All right, step three, promoting your event. Uh, to get attendees, um, you should invite everyone regardless of their original RSVP. So you may have restricted your invite list uh, for your in-person event because you're space constrained. That's not the case uh, with an online event. So you should invite everybody and even expand your invite list. Table captains still work. So this would be a good way uh, to leverage the personal networks of your most ardent supporters. So if you've ever done a table captain process with your in-person event, you designate people to go essentially sell tickets for a table. Well, they can still go sell registrations uh, for your event. Or if your event doesn't have a, 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 a ticket price, uh, you can have their table captains go out and do a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, just as if it, you were doing a fun run. Uh, but instead, you'll just call them table captains and they're competing to raise the most money for your event. Uh, use a multi-channel approach. Uh, this would be email, uh, Facebook, Instagram. I just got a phone call for a completely unrelated webinar about somebody telling me to look out for an email for my webinar. So it is something people do. Um, so if, if necessary, you feel like that's the best way to reach some particularly heavy hitters, a phone call um, is an appropriate approach. Uh, drip teaser videos throughout the week, uh, build momentum up until you up until your event date. Um, and you can raffle tickets for registering. Uh, so and do the, the raffle the drawing live on the air. All right, preempt some questions. Uh, should we charge for tickets? I would say that the problem with charging for tickets is it, it creates a certain level of expectation for your event. So if you're very confident about what you're presenting, uh, then by all means, charge for tickets or if you're including something in the ticket price. So an example would be if you partnered with a local restaurant to uh, cater your event uh, with, uh, say, a $20 gift card um, for takeout, uh, then you can use that as an excuse to charge for tickets. Otherwise, you can use a suggested donation um, and that would let you collect some revenue while still presenting your event uh, to uh, Facebook Live or, or YouTube Live. Should you uh, require registration? Obviously, if you're requiring, uh, uh, if you are selling tickets, uh, you're gonna have to require registration. If you're not selling tickets, you still want registrations because you want that donor data and you also want to make sure, you wanna leverage the registration software ability to, to get people to come to your event. Uh, that would be getting a calendar on their, uh, a calendar invite on their, their digital calendars, as well as sending them uh, reminder emails. So again, you can have a raffle uh, for people who, who pre-register. And what about sponsors? It's gonna be difficult uh, for many businesses to, to justify a sponsorship. Um, and that's just the reality we live in. A lot of businesses are, are bleeding a lot of cash. Um, so you can think creatively about other ways that they can support your event. Um, I gave the example of having a restaurant cater um, your event with a gift card and hopefully they can upsell um, the, the people who uh, redeem, redeem the gift cards uh, with, with a bigger meal. If you have an existing sponsor from your in-person event that got canceled, I encourage you to be proactive about contacting them, explain the promotional opportunity that the virtual event uh, still provides. In a lot of ways, attention is focused on a smaller screen, so the promotional opportunity is greater uh, for them. And they're just a click away, uh, viewers are just a click away from going to their website. 
Um, you can also offer additional promotional opportunities to sweeten the pot um, for uh, the rest of the, um, the year, such as including them in some sort of email blast or other event programming that you're doing. And the last part uh, to pro promoting your event is attendee training. So if you are presenting on a screen, but you're expecting people to vid bid via their smartphones, uh, that can be a lot for people to manage multiple devices. So uh, some things you can do is have practice sessions um, for people who are really concerned about not being able to participate. Make a training video, obviously include a training text um, in your communications. And lastly, in your event lobby. So this is when people log into your event before uh, your event actually starts. Uh, you can present uh, notes about, okay, remember you're, you're watching up here on your screen, but you'll need your phone out to bid. Um, and of course your MCs should uh, give that announcement um, when the event starts. Okay, I'll pause for some more questions. Can you point us to some nonprofits uh, that are doing online events so we can go see someone actually doing this? Yes, so uh, YouTube is an amazing source for you to um, uh, search for online events. Uh, there's no shortage of examples for you to go there, um, see exactly how they executed them. An example would be the Catlin Gable School, uh, which was one of the first ones uh, to do an online event uh, that happened in March. Um, and it's a really fantastic presentation and was done on very short, short timeline. So that would be a good one to check out. Um, uh, but just search for virtual live gala on YouTube and you're, you're gonna find a lot of great examples. All right, step four is to practice and test. Uh, your dry runs should be mandatory for all presenters. Uh, you, if you don't, participate in the dry run, you don't present. This is gonna make sure that there's no technical glitches or training issues, as well as you get a feel for presenting uh, with other people so you're not talking over each other. Uh, you should film yourself practicing uh, so you understand how you get perceived on camera. You might have some verbal tics, some physical tics like swaying uh, that you wouldn't be aware of unless you filmed yourself and gave yourself critical feedback. It's a very painful exercise, but it's an extremely valuable exercise. The Luddite test. Find the least technically savvy person you know, um, including yourself, and have them do an end-to-end -end test from registering to your event to bidding on a test auction item. See where they get stuck and try to clarify that um, or make it easier uh, for users. And last is the latency test. Latency is the delay between you actually presenting something to a camera and uh, the viewer receiving it, seeing it on their screen and, uh, and hearing it. Latency for some webinar softwares can be, I've heard as bad as 10 seconds or 15 seconds, which can be a major problem if you're doing a live presentation and you're trying to interact in real time with viewers. An example would be if you are doing a live auction, but you're collecting bids through the chat window. Well, you can say sold on camera, but 10 seconds later, people will still be uh, entering chats. So you want to have, you want to test um, to make sure that your latency is, is low, or if you have a lot high latency, you make, you have mitigating um, activities uh, to, to minimize the effect of it. Uh, step five is to practice some more. You cannot practice enough. Uh, one auctioneer I talked to, uh, he, it was his first virtual event. Uh, he practiced every day for two weeks. And while it may look easy on the YouTube videos that you watch, uh, there's no shortage of practice that went into that, even though it seemed like, oh, they just made it look so easy. It's not that easy. It takes practice and take the time to get it right. All that said, is that no one is expecting an Emmy-worthy production at your virtual gala. Everybody knows the deal of what happened with events, and they know you're doing your best to roll with the punches. Again, the most important things are for you to communicate your message authentically and to make it easy to give. 
you, a lot of people who will get into a very big deal about uh, production quality will be the people whose jobs uh, rely on, on event production. That's what they do. But people, as, lo as long as you get the basics right, minor technical glitches won't be a big deal as long as you are authentic. Okay, um, that is the end of the presentation. Uh, I'll go through the questions I have. Feel free to ask some additional questions um, and we'll round out the time um, with, with those. Okay, can we get a link to this recording? Uh, yes, once I have it, I will post it to our blog um, and you'll be able to access it there. Oh, sorry about that. Um, can my nonprofit hire you guys to run our online event? Uh, <laughs> that would be an ex expansion of our scope of services. Um, so likely no to that. Okay. Um, is there a good app to record videos? Um, there's no shortage of good apps to record videos. When I make a video, I use a software called Camtasia. Uh, that doesn't actually record the video. It, it doesn't record video. It, it does screen capture videos, but it's also an excellent editing software. If you want to overlay graphics, add effects, et cetera. So that's Camtasia, C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A. Uh, but there are, there are many other options as well. That's just the one that I use. Uh, how do I write it? C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A, -A -A, Camtasia. Uh, Okay, what does my organization do? We covered that at the beginning. Um, we help uh, nonprofits with procurement for auctions. So we partner with generous hospitality companies, golf courses, any experience provider um, who wants to provide a donated or partially donated um, certificate for your uh, benefit event. Um, so you can create a free account as long as you have a 501c3 status. Um, and match some basic criteria, you'll be able to uh, reserve items uh, for your auction. What was the name of the school that I referenced uh, that did the first gala on YouTube? That was the Catlin Gable School, C-A-T-L-I-N, uh, Gable, G-A-B-E-L. So I can type answers here, Gable School. And that was done with a um, professional uh, benefit auctioneer. Um, so it's a very high production quality. Don't feel like that's the standard, uh, but it's a, it's a very high standard to meet um, and it's a good example for you. Okay, pause a few more seconds for any more questions. Okay, um, if you need to contact me, uh, don't hesitate. Um, for example, if you want the slide deck, um, my email is alex at travelpledge.com. Our website is www.travelpledge.com. And you can follow our blog at blog.travelpledge.com. We publish content for organizers of benefit events every week. You could subscribe uh, to just get um, tips and tricks delivered to your inbox um, every Monday. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining. Thank you to the Community Foundation for Northeast Georgia. Um, stay safe, everyone. Um, and thanks again for joining.